One day, we pick up a new radio broadcast on our Pip-Boy, Recon Craft Theta Beacon. It just sounds like static, but our Pip-Boy tells us that the source of the broadcast is coming from a point just northwest of the Greener Pastures Disposal Site. As we head that way, the signal becomes more clear. Well, that almost sounds like language. Like two different people trying to talk with each other. But it's really garbled. As we approach the broadcast's origin, we begin to pick up rads. Cresting a hill, we see... The wreckage of some sort of ship. Is that a spaceship? The cockpit window is completely broken, and we see a little green man in some sort of suit lying dead on the ground. Surrounding him are all of these glowing blue vials, but as we get close to inspect them... Whoa! Whoa! Hey now! Put me down! Hey! Sharon! Sharon, go get help! Go get Sarah! She owes me one from GNR! Help! 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 Everything so blurry. Where are we? We see the forms of three figures standing over us. They look a lot like that green pilot. Whoa. Hey, uh, what are you gonna do with that? Oh no. No, 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 not there. No, 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 we, we, we can talk about this. You, you want caps? I've got caps. Oh, come on. Ah! <laughs> My stove pipe. Hey, hey, you okay? You all right? About time you woke up. I was starting to think maybe they'd fried your brains or something. You got a headache, right? Don't worry, that'll get better. I don't know if it'll matter, but it'll get better. They must really like you. At least they let me keep my clothes. Looks like they stripped you of everything. Stay back! Stay away from me! Whoa, whoa! Settle down there, kid. I'm not gonna hurt you. Take a second, look around, and you'll notice that I'm stuck in here with you, okay? You're okay for now. Well, at least until they decide they want to poke at you some more. Or worse, this has to be a bad dream. Yeah? Well, then wake the hell up, because I'm tired of being stuck in it. Sorry, kid, but this is really happening. You're stuck here just like me. This can't be happening. I mean, aliens? Crazy, ain't it? I thought I'd seen some shit out there in the waste, but nothing like this. Not a whole lot of good news going around right now. If you're lucky, they'll leave you alone for a while. If not... Well, then it's been nice chatting with you. Who are you? What are you doing here? Me? I'm the same as you, I figure. Went poking around someplace I shouldn't have, and now I'm paying for it. So you and me, we're stuck here until they decide they want to prod us some more or worse. Man, I can't believe this. This is what you call, what is it, irony? Hell, I don't know. I've got to get out of here. You and me both, kid. Wish I'd never heard that damn radio signal. Thought I could scare some tech from whatever it came from. Sure as hell wasn't expecting this. 
So who are you and why are you in here with me? You've got it all wrong, kid. You're in here with me. This is my little slice of heaven, not yours. Not a good time for jokes, I guess. Look, I don't know why they put you in here with me. Maybe it's another experiment. Not like I can ask them to find out. But since you asked, name Soma. Beyond that, I'm thinking not much matters if we're gonna stay stuck in here. What do they want with us? Your guess is as good as mine. I can't understand what they're saying. I don't remember half of what they did to me. And that might be a good thing. I know we ain't the only ones. There's a whole bunch of us in here. They'll pluck folks out every now and then. Sometimes they bring them back, sometimes they don't. Either way, I ain't keen to find out what they're doing. So how do we get out of here? I've been here for a little while, but haven't found a way to... Shit. You hear that? It's coming again. Get back against the wall now. With that, Soma runs to the edge of the cell. We see these cameras moving around the perimeter of the ceiling. And then... Oh, what was that? Well, at least it wasn't coming for us. It wasn't? Well, who was it going for? <laughs> this is a fine mess we're in, isn't it? I'm thinking maybe now you can understand it's a good idea to get the hell out of here? What was that thing? Where are they taking that guy? What? You've never seen a giant metal claw scoop somebody up and carry him off to who knows where? I don't know where they're taking him, and I'm not interested in staying here long enough to find out. We gotta get out of here, kid. Now! So how do we get out of here? Well, there ain't no easy way out. Trust me. I've looked. Can't even find anything to pry open, see what's blocking the doorway. I'm thinking they did us a favor, putting us together in here like this. And I say we use it to our advantage. What kind of advantage? They're keeping an eye on us, you know. Watching us. So I say we give them a little show. Give them a reason to pay a little extra attention to us. I'm assuming you have a plan, or are you just making this up? Yeah, a little of both. It always worked for me in the past, no reason to second guess it now. I'm not looking for a sidekick, okay? I just want to get out of here. Sidekick? Who the hell said anything about a sidekick? That's a shitty attitude, kid. Because unless you're willing to work with me, you're going a whole lot of no place. It's going to take both of us to get out of this place. Well, why don't you tell me what you have in mind, and I'll think it over. Oh, sure. Take your time. No rush. Not like we're about to be sliced or diced by who the hell knows what. Fine. So they've kept us alive this long for a reason, right? Seems to me they want to make sure we stay alive for now. So you and me, we have ourselves a little fist fight. Trick them into thinking one of us ain't gonna last too long. Make them come in here and break it up. And when they do, we turn on them. We take out the guards and get ourselves the hell out of this box. You're kidding me. That's the best you've got? Yeah, that's what I've got. I don't see you coming up with anything brilliant, Miss I've Been Here Five Whole Minutes. You really think this'll work? It's worth a try. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing changes. Only we've got a few more bruises. Big deal. Let's give it a shot. I promise. I'll go easy on you. Okay, so we get out of this cell, and then what? Hell if I know, but at least it's a start. It's better than sitting here waiting for them to experiment on us even more. This is stupid. There must be another way out. Are you kidding me? Kid, I've looked. Trust me. Ain't no other way out of this little box they got us in. You want to satisfy your curiosity? Fine, go ahead. You poke your little nose around and see what you come up with. Looking around, we just see those camera things constantly spying on us. Checking out our inventory. Oh, Soma was right. We are completely naked. All our weapons and apparel gone. There's some sort of force field in front of the door and nothing to stand upon. We really are stuck. Let me guess. You can't find a way out, and so you're ready to go along with my plan. 
Am I right? How do I know I can trust you? What if you try to kill me? You gotta be kidding me. You always this paranoid? Think about it. You've been lying here a while now, out cold. If I wanted you dead, why wait till now? I could have just made sure you never woke up. No fuss at all. But I didn't, did I? So yeah, I'm thinking you can afford to show me a little trust. Now are we doing this or what? So if I kill you, that'll bring the guards? Hey, whoa now. Let's not go down that road, sweetie. Take a second and think before you start saying stuff that'll get you killed. I'm telling you, we're gonna have to work together. You keep talking like this, and I'm gonna have to get out of here on my own after I put you down. So are you in, or what? No, I'm not gonna fight you. You gotta be kidding me. You've already looked, haven't you? You know there's no way out. My plan's gonna work. You gotta trust me, kid. Okay, go ahead and hit me. All right, I'll hold back on you. Make sure you don't get too roughed up, okay? And you be ready. Soon as they come in to get us, you take them down. With that, Soma and the Lone Wanderer break into fisticuffs. But it is a half-hearted duel. Ow, that really hurts. Ow, hey, not too hard. Hey, kid, be careful. Ow, that really hurts. Ow, that really hurts. But it's working. The red eyes on the ceiling have spotted our bout and sent some of the aliens to the door. They appear to be having a conversation, figuring out how best to resolve the situation, when finally... Okay, now's our chance. Get them! I'm gonna mess you up! The aliens open the door and race in with shock batons. Oh! Grab anything useful and let's go. Who knows how long it'll be before they send more after us. Despite their superior arms, we make short work of them. We can loot both the shock batons here to quickly arm ourselves before two more aliens enter from the western door. I'm gonna mess you up! Okay, we gotta find a way out of here. You're the one with the plan. Plan? Yeah, we just used my plan. It got us out of our cell. Hate to break it to you, but that's all I've got. We have to wing it from here. Do you have any idea where we are? Or how to get back home? Not a clue. I'm hoping we can get some answers once we get out of this place. All right, then. I'll take over from here. Oh, really? Suddenly you have all the answers. Listen, kid. I'm all ears if you've got an idea. But there's no way you've got any more idea of what's going on here than I do. Well, we need to figure out exactly where we are before moving forward. We appear to be in some sort of holding cell. We see other electrified cells nearby. We can open them by pressing the blue buttons on the wall. In this cell, we find a dead Enclave soldier. But at least we can loot his uniform so that now we're no longer naked. There are a few other empty cells here and one with a Rivet City security guard. I'll wake up any minute now. Just need to wake up. Nope. Nope. Not real. None of it is real. It can't hurt me if it's not real! Oh, this poor woman. But we can't convince her to come with us. Moving east down the hallway, we find some sort of control room with three interactive controls. Above each is some sort of hologram. It almost looks like a speaker vibrating to sound. Upon activating the first control, we find a note. Alien captive recorded log number 15. Checking it out in our Pip-Boy. Well, this is just ridiculous. I demand to see whomever's in charge. Yeah, yeah, I ain't, you know. Ow! What the? Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? Yeah, but I, uh, you get not. Ow! Stop it! I am a U.S. Senator, and I warn you, if any harm comes to me, you'll bring the full wrath of the U.S. military upon yourselves. What? Where are you taking me? Get your goddamn hands off me! You'll all pay for this! The U.S. doesn't bargain with aliens! So they record their previous captives. Moving north along the console, we can activate the next one. This gives us recorded log number 22. Oh, no way, no way! This is a bad dream, right? I'm dreaming. Shit. 
So what, I'm being held hostage now or something? I'm some kind of prisoner? Listen, if this is because of what we did, I just work for those guys, okay? It's not like I enjoyed it. I was just in it for the caps, all right? Can I go now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, we instantly recognize that voice. This must have been the abduction recording of Soma, our new companion here. It sounds like she might have done something in her past that she is a bit ashamed of. Look, I'm glad we're still alive too, but can we celebrate later? Like, maybe after we actually get out of here? We get the impression that she may be a mercenary. There is one more control we can interact with, and this gives us recorded log number 14. What are we going to do? They just threw me in the cell view after they poked and prodded me, and now I just hope they won't kill us. Just take it easy. If they wanted us dead, we'd be dead. They must need something from us. Yeah, they need us for food or something. You saw that guy. He was all cut open, like he'd been butchered. Oh my god, we're gonna be next! Hey, I said calm down. If they hear you, they may come for us. Try and take it easy. No! Get us the hell out of here! Someone get us out, please! I said to shut up! I'm sorry, I'm sorry I did that. Please forgive me, but we need to keep our heads on straight if we're going to survive. Please, please. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. They butcher their captives? What do they do with them? And how long has this been going on? That senator couldn't have been from our time. He must have been captured before the war. Have these guys been here for 200 years? That room was a dead end, so we need to move west to continue. Here we find a pink glowing arch. Walking through it, we notice that it restores a little bit of our health. And by a little bit, I do mean a little bit. We hardly see our HP meter move. I found out later that we can hack these arches to make them much more productive, but this decreases their lifespan. We arrive in another control room, blinking consoles and chairs all over. We find a door to the west with a hologram of some pipes above it, and then another control to the south. This gives us recorded log number 12. Where, where am I? Where's my sister? I can hear some weird noises, but I can't see you. Why is it so dark in here? What's this machine? Please! Someone talk to me! I want to go home! Please! Where's my mommy and daddy? I just want to go home! Oh! That's right! Oh! 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 Wait. What? Oh my god! No! Stay away from me! Get away! They kidnapped a little girl? What did they do to her? Moving east, we see another control. This gives us recorded log number one. What? Talk into this thing? Just... talk? I, I don't have to do anything else? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow! All right! Ow! I said all right, just stop! <sighs> hello. Um... Hello. My name is Andrew Endicott. On the night of May 17th, the year of our Lord 1697, I was... I was taken from my home in Salem Village. I... I do not know where I am, exactly, or why I came to be here. I've seen through... windows. The stars, and sun, and beloved Earth. Down there, below me. So it would seem I am aboard some... vessel, suspended in the ether. Ironically, it would seem so close to where I thought heaven must surely lie. But this is not heaven, and my captors are not angels. I'm not entirely unconvinced that the scripture is wrong, that heaven and hell are reversed. For my captives are devils, demons from my nightmares. Even now, they watch me, 
make me talk. They seem to want me to tell my story. I know not why. A, a record of their deeds, perhaps? Or am I just a pawn in some, some evil game? And there are others, other captives, I mean. From whence they came, I cannot say. Some wear strange dress, as if they are from a different time. And some are frozen as in ice, unmoving, but I think alive. I believe they plan the same fate for me. Will I be frozen too? Will I? Oh, stop it. I did what you said. You wanted me to talk, so I talked. Just leave me, leave me be. Well, that breaks the divergence a little bit. Andrew Endicott came from Salem in 1697. That's well before the divergence in the 1950s. We can explore Salem in Fallout 4. It's close to Boston. But sadly, we don't find any trace of Andrew Endicott. Turning around, we can tag the final control. And here we get captive recorded log number three. You know, I... Yes, yes, I understand. I I've seen the others. I I'll do what you want. This is Dr. Morrison Rand, Professor of Anthropological Archaeology at Banfield College, Humboldt, Oregon. Shortly after 10 p.m. on August 16th, 2041, as I was leaving the college campus, headed to my car, I saw a blinding light. It just appeared in the sky, directly over me. I was blinded. I also found my body completely immobilized. I, I couldn't move. Not, not at all. What happened next is hazy. I don't remember much. What became clear later, uh, what is certainly clear now, is that I was abducted. I am now the captive of an alien race, one of many people held here against our will. And like those others, I am recording who I am. Why? Because the aliens want us to for some reason. They have us do it right before they put us into some kind of suspended animation. These recordings, it's almost as if we're creating our own library catalog entries before we get put into a giant collection. The entire experience would be fascinating if I weren't so completely terrified. Uh, wh what? Stop. You want me to stop now? All right, all right, see? I'm stopping. So the aliens are collecting people from Earth and putting them in some sort of collection, like how children collect butterflies? And they've been doing so for at least 600 years. Well, since the western door with the pipe hologram is blocked, our only option is to move south. Pulling out our shock baton and opening the door, we arrive at another holding cell. And here, what's this? Hello? Hi! Hi there! Listen, can you let me out of here? It's the little girl from the recording. What the hell is this thing? What are we supposed to do with it? You have to shut that off to open the door here. Well, not really shut it off. More like blow it up. If you turn off the coolant, it'll get really hot and then explode. So be careful, okay? Okay. Well, we can't just leave her here. We see Soma standing by this machine thing she found. What are you waiting for? Let the kid out already. We need to turn off the coolant. Well, the only thing we can interact with is this big button on the front. Aha. A reactor of some sort rises from the ground, as do three core coolant switches. When we tag one, well, I guess that is how we remove the coolant. So going around to each core coolant switch, and wait for the thing to overheat. Bingo! The cell's open, and the captive young girl walks towards us. Thanks! Are you escaping? Do you want to see the rest of this place? I've seen a bunch. I can show you if you want. I think you should wait here. It's too dangerous for a little girl. No, it's not. They almost never catch me. You'll see. Well, I think I've got this under control. I can help! Honest! How exactly are you going to help? Watch, you'll see. 
With that, Sally runs north, and she heads right towards that locked door with the pipe hologram. But then, what's this? She crouches down and crawls through some sort of vent. Oh, great. Well, so much for that idea. She suckered you good, huh? Oh, yeah, I guess she did. Well, Soma, any more bright ideas? Well, wait a minute. Oh. See? I told you I could help. How did you do that? There's wires and stuff inside the wall there. A while ago, I learned which ones to put together to make the doors work. There's all kinds of stuff in the walls, but I guess you're too big to see. But that's okay. I can get to it just fine. Thanks, kid. We're getting out of here. You want to come with us? Sure. I love exploring, and it's been a while since I've been out and about. We'll have to be careful, because they'll be mad that we're out. But it's okay. I know how to get through the steamworks. Listen, we're all in danger if we stay here. Oh, I know. They're always mad when they find out that I've been out of my cell. They're going to be really mad when they see what you did. But it's okay. I'll go with you. I can show you around some. I've seen a whole bunch of this place already. We need to go through the steamworks to the big engine room. From there, we can see all sorts of places. Come on. I'll help you get there. How do you know so much about this place? Oh, I've been here a while. A long while. Sometimes, I can sneak out of my cell and go explore. I've seen a bunch of the ship. It's pretty neat. But they always catch me and put me back here. Are you all alone? Where's your family? I don't have any family anymore. My mom and dad died a while ago, before I ended up here. You know, back when all the bombs dropped on everything. Yeah, it was right after that. And then me and my sister, we got pulled up here. Except... I haven't seen her in a long time. Her sister. So this is the same girl we heard in that recording. And how long has she been here? Do people not age on this ship? Well, Sally, do you know where we're going? Sure. We need to go to the big engine thing, and then from there we can go up to the top of the ship. That's where the guy in charge is. I've only seen him once or twice, but he's extra mean. I guess you'll probably have to kill him or something, huh? Let's keep moving. Okay, come on! Despite giving us the impression that we should follow her, she instead follows us. But there's only one way to go, which makes things easy. Heading west, we see movement to the south. Turning off our light and waiting. Oh, he found us. (laughs) These aliens aren't that tough. On his corpse, we find a large alien crystal, which has no use except that it's valuable. There are two types of crystals. The large ones sell for 20 caps, and the small ones sell for 10. Since they're weightless, we can collect as many as we can. And we find another shock baton. If our repair skill is good enough, by this time we should have a nearly fully repaired shock baton, which increases its damage. The shock baton works a lot like the police baton from Earth, though they differ in that they do two electrical damage every second for five seconds. They have a base damage per attack of 20, but since they're pretty fast, they have a damage per second of 48.2, making it a pretty decent melee weapon, but not quite as nice as my sword from Operation Anchorage. Heading west, we see a door, but it's locked. This object is activated from somewhere else. So turning south, we enter a small room where we find... What are these? Chests? Hey, hey, it's all my gear that the aliens took from me. We find two more chests here, one filled with energy cells, plasma grenades, and a plasma pistol. On the ground next to this is an Enclave power helmet. Oh man, looks like they've abducted quite a few Enclave soldiers. This is a great helmet, but it's not unique to this DLC, so I won't cover it in detail here. And then in the final chest, we just find a frag grenade. To move forward, we activate a switch near to the window. This opens the door. I was about to head through it when I realized that Soma wasn't with us. Sally's tagging along, but where did Soma go? Retracing our steps, we find her hanging out in this control room. Listen, I know how this shit works. We all go together, and we all get wiped out at the same time. No offense, but I'm gonna hang back for a bit. You need someone to keep an eye out behind you anyway. Don't worry, I'll catch up with you soon enough. So, travel in numbers and you're more likely to get wiped out? Nice logic there, Soma. Well, at least she's going to be watching our back. I guess we'll see her later. 
Now, it's off to the steamworks. On the other side of the door, Sally moves down to the end of the hallway. As we get close, she stops us. Wait here for a second. There's more of them coming. Backing up a bit and hiding behind a wall, we do see shimmering forms moving around off to the southwest. I guess they're already looking for us. I can sneak past them in the vents, but you're too big to fit. We'll have to figure out how to get around. How about I distract them, and you hit them from behind with a grenade? Wow, really? I get to use a grenade? Neat! We can then give her a grenade of our choice. Cool. Give me just a second to get behind them. She runs off to the north and crawls through a vent. Now she asked us to wait, but if we are impatient, we can sneak forward for a closer look. But they spot us. I had forgotten that I had looted all of my gear. I should have taken out my metal blaster. Instead, I used this shock baton. Alternatively, if we follow Sally's advice, we wait for her to give us instructions. It was hard to hear amongst all the steam, but she said, okay, go get their attention. As we creep forward, well, Sally's grenade worked wonders and saves us a whole lot of trouble. On their bodies, we find a new item, alien worm food. This disgusting looking entree is one of three new food items we find here. Since it does not come from Earth, it doesn't give us rads, but it only heals five hit points. That said, since it has no adverse effects, we might as well chow down on these suckers when we find them. After equipping and hot king our items, we can crawl forward. Arounding a corner, we see more of these aliens with their weird shimmering armor. I think there are more coming down the hall. Stay here, and I'll try and get this door open for you. Sally's assuming that we want to sneak by these guys, and that may be smart, but I want to get as much gear off them as I can, so instead of sneaking by, we'll take them out. Oh my goodness. Maybe we should have listened to Sally and snuck by anyway. I went through way too many stim packs, taking them all on at once like that. The upside is that we find a bunch of new stuff, including a new energy rifle called the Alien Disintegrator. The Alien Disintegrator is an amazing weapon. It has a huge magazine capacity, holding 100 rounds before we have to reload. Reloading is a snap. We just push a button on the rifle and it has low spread. We also find alien power modules, which is the ammunition used by all of the alien weapons here, and another new weapon called the Alien Atomizer. This is an energy pistol, but it's unique in that it has zero spread, meaning that a player with 100 energy weapon skill can fire right on the crosshair. It's also extremely valuable. Weighing only two pounds, each one fully repaired is worth 250 caps. It has a base damage of 35, but costs 20 action points, making it, in my opinion, better to use outside of VATS. It has a final DPS of 105, which makes it a pretty deadly pistol. And the last new item we find is Alien Epoxy. 
This alien epoxy is used to repair the currently equipped weapon, which is extremely important when using Earth weapons during this DLC, as we can't find others to repair our gear with. Each alien epoxy will restore the condition of your currently equipped weapon on a scale matching your repair skill, so someone with a repair skill of 100 can restore 30% condition to their weapon using one alien epoxy. To use the epoxy, just navigate to the aid section of your Pip-Boy and activate it like a stim pack. It'll restore the condition of your currently equipped weapon. Well, we're starting to understand alien technology a little better, but we still gotta find a way out of here. We'll go through the door to the room Sally wanted us to explore. Inside we find a chest that has the two final food items available in this DLC. The first is alien biogel. The biogel heals between 10 and 30 hit points, based on our medicine skill level, but the downside is that consuming the biogel gives us a negative status effect called a biochemical anomaly. These anomalies are random. In this instance, I got negative one intelligence, but it could be negative one perception, endurance, agility, or plus five radiation damage per second. Or it could be a good status effect, healing radiation or hit points, or giving us a temporary stat boost of plus two to strength or two to agility. It's good to collect these because later on, we can turn this into advanced biogel, which we'll talk about then. The final new item here is alien squid food, which is exactly like the tentacle food, healing plus five hit points with no negative status effect. As we finish exploring this room, we go down a hallway to enter another room where Sally gives us the lowdown on these healing arches. and we can exit through the door to the north. This brings us back out to that hallway where we killed all those aliens. To continue on our way, we head west and the northwest through a door, but the aliens hear us coming. Not bad. I think I'll try to use alien technology exclusively through this playthrough. As we head through the door. Oops, I didn't see those two. Uh, there's a door on the left I can open though. You should try and go that way. Sorry. <laughs> Sally keeps talking to us through the walls. We will head left as she says, but first we can open a chest by a northern door to loot up on all of the new wonderful alien stuff we found. Another atomizer, more squid food, power modules, and epoxy. We can open a northern door. We see movement on the other side, but instead of going through there right now, we'll follow Sally's advice and head west, where we find an alien. <laughs> Heading down the hallway, we can go up some stairs where we kill one more alien. <laughs> and at the top, Sally has us wait. Wait here for just a second. I can do something to distract them. When you hear the noise, go to your left, okay? Peering through the door, we see a lot of movement. Oh, moving quickly. We go down the hallway and into the western room. There's some alien goo tubes on that table over there. I've seen them use it to fix guns and stuff. I bet it'll work for you too. This is the alien epoxy we talked about earlier. Wonderful stuff. Gonna collect as much of it as I can. And at the end of the hallway, another alien. I am in love with this rifle. And look at the sights, those three dots. Isn't that great? <laughs> I love it. You're not looking. down the stairs and out the door at the bottom. Sally wants me to run out the door, but I want to explore this place first. So after looting a chest in this room, instead of going down the stairs and running out the door, we can clear this loft level of enemies. Ooh, headshot. We see some robots downstairs. What's that? Oh, a support drone. Looks 
like these guys just did melee damage. They're a great source of power modules, though. But after clearing this top level, we don't find anything interesting. So heading down the stairs to the bottom level, we could turn north. But instead, we'll explore the bottom floor first. We find our room to the east, which has two doors in and out, but there's nothing inside. So heading out and turning south, we see that these doors lead back the way we came. This was the door that we skipped and instead chose to go up the stairs following Sally's advice. So we know exactly where we're at. That means to continue, we have to go north. And heading through the door, we see more aliens. Wait, wait a minute, they're not attacking. Oh, and I lost karma. These are unarmed alien workers. The other guy cowers on the ground here before running off. I feel horrible, but this presents us with a conundrum. If we kill them, we're murdering an unarmed alien and we lose karma. But if we don't, they can run off and alert their buddies who come back with big weapons. All right, Sally, I'll leave him alone. Continuing down this hallway. This bed goes a different way, so you'll be by yourself for a while. Don't worry, I'll catch up. Be careful. Looks like Sally's gonna leave us for a while. Rounding the corner. Oh, a ceiling mounted machine gun turret. Aliens dead, we can continue east. Thankfully, we won't have someone yapping at us through walls anymore for a while. We find a healing archway, and when fully healed and ready, we can head east through the door. A worker ran by and alerted some of the nearby aliens who come around a big machine looking for us. But our alien disintegrator makes quick work of them. This bottom floor is just filled with a bunch of machines spewing steam. So heading up some steps to the second floor, we can take in our surroundings. We don't see any other enemies, so standing up and moving southwest, we can loot another chest. But I was wrong. One more alien. And another comes up behind him. But we can dispatch him with a sneak critical. This catwalk leads to an empty control room, but we see shimmering movement on the other side of this door. These aliens must be wearing some sort of projected force field over their bodies, because the aliens that shimmer are way harder to kill than the others. Heading into the room, we can destroy a ceiling-mounted turret before heading through a northern door, healing ourselves with a healing archway, and finding more aliens at the bottom of some stairs. Jeez, those shimmering aliens are nuts. Down the stairs, we loot the bodies, and then head through a northern door down a hallway. Hi, I'm back again. There she is, just in time to help me fight an alien. They pushed me all the way back into the last room. Pushing forward again, we can creep through the door and get rid of some ceiling-mounted turrets. This bottom floor has a bunch of steam machines, but no loot or any hidden doors. So to continue, we go through a northern door, which leads to a stairway bringing us up top. Here we find two more of those hard-armored aliens. Back up the steps into that top level, we see Sally standing by a southeastern door. I'll stay here until it's safe, okay? But before she can move forward, we've got to clear the place. Turning around, we can open a door to the west where we find some alien crystals on a nearby shelf and a chest on the ground. Heading out and passing Sally, we can go down a catwalk. The catwalk splits to the south, but going east first. We find a dead end, but here we can find some more alien worm food and some crystals on a desk. 
Turning around, we can move south. We see that it splits again, this time to the west or to the south. Heading south first, this leads to another dead-end room. Nothing here. So we'll go west, where we find a ceiling-mounted turret. This leads us to a doorway above which is another hologram. I'm starting to get the idea that these holograms are trying to tell us something about what's beyond the door. I get the impression this is some sort of core or maybe a hub of some sort. Sure enough, the door at the other end is labeled Engineering Core. Sally joins us on the other side. We head up some stairs and then west through a doorway to a large room with windows out into space. Oh, look at that. So we are in space, not in some underground terrestrial alien lab. There's minor loot in this room, alien crystals, epoxy, and food. When done looting, we can head up the stairs to talk with Sally. Okay, I'll show you what I found. If you want to get out of here, I think it'll help. Come on, follow me. She leads us to a northern door on this top level. Aw, oh, nuts. They turned it off. Last time I was here, I used this to get to the top of the ship. It's kind of like an elevator, only it doesn't just go up and down. Feels sort of tingly, too. They must be pretty angry that we're exploring. Oh, I know. Come on, I know another way up. So they locked it down. Well, following Sally south through the door leads us into the engineering core. Sally just runs boldly through the place, so I guess there's no aliens here. Though we do see some harmless workers running around downstairs. Sally ran south across the catwalk to the other end. Following her, we find another one of those holograms outside this room. Is that uh, like a, an elevator? Portal? Cryopod? Inside, sure enough, we find a bunch of cryopods. So, this is it. Pretty neat, huh? I've never had the courage to wake them up, but I think you're going to need to. The spaceman has a suit, and we need him to use it. Why do we need a spaceman to help us? Well, because he's got a spacesuit. Can't go out in space without one. And if we're going to escape, we need to go outside. If they turn out the elevator things, that's the only other way to go. So we need a suit. See? Simple. What are these things? I've seen these all over. They put people in them, and the people go to sleep. They stay asleep for a really long time, too. Be careful if you touch them, though. They're really cold. Who are these people? I don't know. I've never talked to them. Sometimes I'd come and look at them and wonder why they're dressed like that. You see that one guy? He has this really neat suit on, like armor or something. And that other guy? He looks just like a cowboy. I saw pictures of cowboys in books. I never saw a real one, though. All right, let's talk to the astronaut. This is going to be so neat. Our next task is to wake up each of these people who had been abducted by the aliens and placed in cryogenic sleep pods. God knows how long they've been here on ice. We'll thaw each and every one of them and learn their stories in tomorrow's episode. I publish many videos each week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. Sponsors of my channel gain access to Oxymojis, which you can use during the live chat of my live streams. I have a bunch of shirts available with wonderful designs. They come in men's and women's sizes and in a wide array of colors. If interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with episode two. Just do what the girl says. Get him out of those things.